Yeah, I think it's funny that every time I do a video and drink one of these, the comment section's all like, Oh, you gotta stop drinking those! It's bad for you! You won't be able to sleep! You'll get insomnia! I I'm filming this at midnight after watching Game of Thrones. I'm tired. I'm in my sweatpants. The whole point is to get insomnia. I don't want to sleep. I don't care. Okay? I'll admit, I feel a little sick right now. Because I drank this too fast. But that's my problem! <laughs> By the way, Game of Thrones kind of sucked. <laughs> oh, and I got brand new Joy-Cons. I'm a blue guy now. I'm not sure what that says about me. But speaking of this system and making changes to it, I made a tweet last week at some point, I can't remember, and Twitter themselves decided to just feature it on the front page of Twitter. It was very random. I didn't even know that was a thing that could happen, but that tweet ended up getting thousands of replies. And the tweet was essentially, what do you want from the Switch? What games would you like to see on the Switch? What hardware revisions do you think may be possible in the future? Or even what kind of like software changes would you like? What apps do you need? I didn't expect that tweet to do as well as it did, but do well it did. So I figured this is a perfect chance for me to use this platform and my voice to voice your voices and maybe get a little bit of a message through to Nintendo that, hey, these are the things that we want. And it's great for you, Nintendo. All of your hardcore fans are right here telling you what it is we would like to see on this system. And now you don't have to do all of it. I mean, to be honest, you don't have to do any of it. <laughs> Clearly we all love this thing regardless. This is just the things that would push us over the edge, make us love this system even more. So I'm gonna go through as many of these tweeted replies as possible. I'm obviously gonna highlight the ones that got the most hearts and the most likes because obviously people agree with those ones the most, but there are some that I found interesting that only got a few likes. I'm gonna highlight those as well because they were different and I think they're good ideas. So Nintendo, I do hope you're listening to this and this isn't falling on deaf ears and it doesn't end up just being a list of cool things the Switch should have had. Oh, and if you're watching this and you agree with any of the stuff I say today, then please feel free to share the video with like-minded individuals because that is how we get things done. It's also how I get views and I would, I would like that. <laughs> with all that being said, please bang all over that like button and let's get started. Sorry, ladies, uh, the next 30 seconds or so ain't for you. This segment is actually sponsored by Manscaped. Look, I know what's an awkward conversation to have, but guys, trust me, the ladies, all the guys, I don't give a crap, it's all love. No matter what you need in that department, Manscaped.com has you covered. It's the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene. We have the Lawn Mower 2.0. It's a waterproof manscaping trimmer with a Powerful 6,000 RPM motor. Ooh. And don't be scared by the name Lawn Mower. It's not gonna cut anything off other than, you know, hair. Right here in this nifty little box, I have what they call the plow. It's a stainless steel double-edged single blade. That's for if you're looking to go completely bare. Unlike me, everything here was made in the USA. And you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's literally no risk in at least trying this out. And as a secret bonus gift for my subscribers, you get this fancy travel bag when you order, as well as 20% off and free shipping. And if the one you love is sat next to you right now, nudging you in the ribs and going, eh? Eh? then you might want to check that description and find the code for the 20% off. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Let's move on. I have broken down all these replies into three categories, software, hardware, and games. And I'm gonna tackle them all in that order. And I think that software updates and changes are the most likely scenario here to actually happen. For example, spoiler alert, I'm gonna do one now. A lot of people wanted themes. And I feel like it's really easy for Nintendo to go in there and code some themes and there you go, people be satisfied. I have given you themes. Whereas some people wanted, you know, specific hardware changes, Joy-Con changes, that's a little more difficult. But the software, that is where we can definitely speak up and get things done. So let's start with that. I'm gonna start with what was by far the most requested thing out of, you know, games, hardware, software, anything, Netflix. <laughs> I know you can have it pretty much everywhere, even on a toaster. I'm not sure if that one's actually true. It would be cool to see, but a Netflix app would be nice. Even my friend Nintendo had a pretty high rated comment that just said the word Netflix. Now, I'm not allowed to have my opinion. <laughs> my name is Poppy Harlow. <laughs> Netflix is so obvious. I mean, we have Hulu. 
Hulu is great. I love, I have Hulu and I love Hulu, but isn't Netflix like the main one? Hulu must have worked out some kind of deal. There has to be some kind of money being exchanged for them to be the only streaming app on Switch right now. Unless Netflix just doesn't care, but Netflix was on the Wii. For crying out loud. Yes, Netflix is everywhere, possibly even on toasters, but since when was having more options a bad thing? Here's one that's very underrated, and Luke himself even said that it was underrated, but I agree. Harrison said eShop Music. Yes. Where is that? I always thought that was weird. You had the core, just bring back the Wii eShop music. That was awesome. Even the Wii U had eShop music and the Switch is just, it's so quiet. It's almost nostalgic in its own way. Yeah, bring that back. So as I said, themes was gonna be one. Drew said themes, he even has an example picture here. A ton of people wanted themes. And then under that, Macahead even said, we have basic black and basic white. Why not just, at the very least, other colors to choose from? This is one I feel like could happen. If we really pushed for this, if people really wanted this and you know, a uh, thousand and two hundred likes just on that one post alone Clearly a lot of you want this and I think it's a cool idea I get bored of just looking at the white that is such an easy like button to be flipped Just to be able to import your own image into it and use that as your background whatever It doesn't hurt anyone when I think of my switch I really do think of it as mine like I feel closer to my switch than I do my PlayStation Which you know stays in my living room at all times. It's just like part of the furniture my switch follows me everywhere my switch is part Part of my identity in a way not just because of my channel and what I have built here but just because it's always with me whatever room I'm in my switch is in in case I want to play something so being able to customize that it, it will just make you feel even closer to your switch to identify with it even more to put to be able to put your own personality right there on the home page I feel like it would just build in its own subconscious weird way a closer relationship with every owner and their switch I know that sounds weird but that's not a bad thing to happen with the hardware you want people to be playing on exclusively and spending money on. Also, it's just a cool idea. Black and white, boring. Give us some themes. Please. <laughs> cloud saves. That's one that really didn't come up enough in these results. Yes, cloud saves on just everything. Just save to the cloud. Jamie said a browser. I'm sure a ton of other people said a browser as well. And that's another fantastic idea and I feel like another pretty easy thing to make happen. The Wii U had a browser and it was perfect because the Wii U pad, I mean you would restrained within your house, you couldn't go 10 feet away from the freaking console without it losing connection. You could use that as a tablet and sit with your little pointy pen on the internet, browse into your heart's content. If you were near the system that the TV's on, you could obviously browse on the TV too. But having this portable tablet system that is the Switch, having a browser is great. And it does open possibilities, like if you don't want to give us a Netflix app, we'll just Use the browser and go to Netflix. I'm pretty sure that would work. The Wii U had it, why doesn't the Switch? Rewind Mike, actually a really nice guy who I met a few times and has a YouTube channel, you should check it out. Achievement system would be awesome. I am such a fan of this. I am not supposed to have my opinion, but I am such a fan of, I've been saying, I gave up saying this. I'll be honest, I gave up fighting the good fight on this one a long time ago. I love achievements. I'm okay on trophies. <laughs> That's fine. I love that they're there when I'm playing a PlayStation game, but I, I love getting achievements. I love the way they pop up. I love the sound they make. I love now you can get rare achievements and there's that diamond that spins around. But beyond my own personal just love of the an achievement system, achievements at their core give players a reason to keep playing. And it's such an easy way to give a game replayability. A game that inherently doesn't have replayability. Once you can, once you finish it, you're done and you can move on. As soon as you add achievements to that, and you have to play that game a second time or a third time to get all those achievements, achievement hunters at heart that just want all those, they're gonna go back through and play those games two or three times. You instantly add a lifespan to your games with an achievement system. So Nintendo not having one is, it's costing yourself money. And I've never understood it. You can, and the ba oh my gosh, I could talk about this all day. You could call them something like stars or something, where you're like unlocking Mario stars, Nintendo coins. I don't know, you you unlock mushrooms. Like, I don't know, man. There's so many options there to Nintendo it up. Justin at Down Phoenix wasn't the only one to say this, but voice chat without having to use a separate app or device. Nintendo, I get it. You implemented a system you thought would work, and it didn't. But you're sticking to your guns, because it's there. And it, it's it, you don't want to go back on that, because it looks silly. It looks silly. It looks silly. I get it. I get it. 
you tried something out, it didn't work, it's okay. It's okay to say, hey, that didn't work, we're gonna end up doing what we should have done in the first place, and giving you a chat system, and a party system, and voice chat systems, <laughs> like it's 2019. Nintendo. You've done so many amazing things to join us in the future of gaming here with this system. You've left the past behind, you made those mistakes, and you're moving forward not making the same mistakes you made on the Wii U, but the one mistake that you consistently make and just refuse to not make is a decent messaging system, an in-game voice chat, and a party system, and just the entire communication side of things when it comes to playing games. You're all about playing games with friends, you're all about communication, you're all about people just talking and having a good time and playing games together. That is the whole point of your systems, and you refuse to give us a way to communicate. At the very least, let us message our friend accounts. If we have a friend added, that friend has agreed to be my friend, let me at least send a message to my friend. And from there, can you please let me just call them in a party chat system, please? As far as I saw, and I scrolled through as many of those comments as I could, those were all of the main wants and requirements from like a software standpoint. I'm sure that since this video is gonna get way more views and comments than that one Twitter post, that there are things I haven't said, there's gonna be a ton of things you guys want. So with all these categories in mind, and especially this one, please feel free to leave your thoughts down below and add to it, because there's no way I'm gonna get to everything and maybe I'll do a follow-up video if this one does well and there's enough requests that aren't weird down below. Okay, let's move on to the very unlikely, but let's be very hopeful, hardware changes. Nanny, the word that I'm not gonna say out loud, one of them hidden in here was better battery life. A lot of people want a better battery life on the Switch. Obviously, specifically for the actual part that plays the games and runs the everything, the Joy-Cons last forever, it seems like, in my opinion. I do find that my Switch lasts about three hours depending on the game. I've had it last five to six hours on some games that aren't that demanding, aren't that taxing, but yeah, on games like Breath of the Wild, you're gonna get three hours tops out of it. So I would say that obviously more battery life is never gonna be a bad thing, but I'm sure that's something Nintendo knows and they're figuring out. Whatever battery they put in here, it was an affordable battery that kept the price down and they maybe they even figured that that was enough time. But as technology gets better, I'm sure we'll have batteries that are capable of more and I'm sure in future revisions of the Switch, we will see batteries capable of more battery life just by default because technology. So the same comment starts talking about the Joy-Cons and a lot of people talked about the Joy-Cons removing drift. So I don't know if I've just been completely oblivious to it this whole time or if now after two or three years after the Switch being out these bad boys are finally starting to drift. I don't know what's going on but there was a ton of comments about that so it must be a thing. It's not something that I've experienced but from what I'm gathering dust works its way into these little plastic grooves here and then they start to cause drift so when you're playing games you're Joy-Cons are kind of drifting to a side. I, again, I haven't had it yet, but if this many people are complaining about it, it's clearly a thing. Also, I've upgraded my Joy-Cons a couple of times now, so that's another reason why I probably, now that I think about it, haven't experienced that. So people were saying, hey, what about metal ball bearings inside or something to make them more sturdier? And then talking about Joy-Cons, how about a Joy-Con variant that has a D-pad? How about pro Joy-Cons that are like bigger, that actually have these big plastic grips that hang off of them, so you don't have to buy accessories to slide onto your Switch and instead the actual Joy-Cons themselves were just media and they were just an option. Maybe they wouldn't work that well with games like Mario Party or you wouldn't really be able to play them on their side as comfortably. But I mean, you already can't do those things with a pro controller. This is just another controller option, another controller variant, a pro Joy-Con controller. And I think that is a great idea. And honestly, a huge oversight on Nintendo's part as far as where are our Joy-Con variants? This is a rant, this is a whole video I could do on its own. Because when the Switch first got leaked, even, when the designs came out and people started realizing that this thing was gonna have removable Joy-Cons, concept art was everywhere for these possibilities Nintendo could create of these controllers that clicked into either side. People's imaginations ran wild. And I always thought, what is Nintendo going to do? Like, they have so many options. That is such a Nintendo thing to do as well, is design all these crazy different add-on controllers, and they never did. They not only stuck to the same design this entire time, but they didn't really give us that many colors or design schemes. But where was just like the funky skins, or just maybe even more colors than like seven, and half of them in neon? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but I, I'm not supposed to have my opinion. Oh, so like it's... 
<laughs> There's so many things people want. It's almost like, hey, Nintendo, did you get anything right? <laughs> you did. I, I can I, I just want to take a second because I'm getting exhausted. I love the system. I think it's great the way it is. And if they never, if you never change a thing, Nintendo, I'll still be perfectly happy with the thing. I, I love this thing to death. And I will take this the way it is to my grave. It's my favorite system of all time. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I mean that all these things will make little like quality of life fixes, right? And they would, a lot of them are really cool and would really improve the thing, but I love it the way it is. Can I just say that? Can I just put that out there, that disclaimer out there really quick? In saying that, this sucks. And this is another complaint a lot of people had. This thing. I hate this thing. This thing sucks. I have always hated this thing. You have designed- Okay, this actually, this sucks. <laughs> you designed a system that is in some parts supposed to be played in a tabletop setting and you put in not only the flimsiest, the worst kickstand imaginable, but it literally has one degree of like, that. that's it. You play, you can play at that angle and that's, you know how inconvenient that is? You realize that tables aren't made just at one height across the world. And a lot of third parties came out and made like stands where you could like, and you could so easily have done it, just have it so it like, it clicks in the different angles and you could have it at different, it's just flimsy and it sucks. I know it's designed so that if you left it out and you put it in the dock, it doesn't break the stand. It just flips straight out, but it just makes it so flimsy. Where did it even go? Frankie boy says, make a second micro SD card slot. Okay, maybe in a pro that might be possible, but as someone that doesn't know much about cameras, but loves cameras, when I was looking into getting cameras, the really expensive ones at the same quality as the one I got had two card slots. And everyone said two card slots makes the camera that much more expensive, but it could be a similar thing on the Switch, and I don't think that's inherently needed. However, I do agree. Yeah, I'm completely at max on my card. I actually, I've forgotten what's even in mine. I have a 128 gig in mine, and that's not enough. I need to upgrade it because I am, I am well past max. We need bigger SD cards. Someone needs to make more gig. We need like a two terabyte mini SD card. That sounds like it's probably going to be a thing pretty soon anyway, right? Or if not, already, it's probably already a thing. It just needs to become a four. Tyler said something that I somewhat agree with a smaller bezel for a bigger screen and 1080 handheld uh, So that's it's half correct. <laughs> we don't need a 1080 screen I think a lot of people realize this 720 for a screen this size is more than enough But the smaller bezel I that's something I have said for a very long time if Nintendo makes a pro model You could even leave the switch itself. It's like actual size the same size just kill this bezel kill this black border around the edge and bring the screen right out. It's gonna feel so much bigger. I'm not saying it. So in my initial tweet, I said something that I really wanted was a head jack in the Pro Controller. Nintendo kind of completely screwed the pooch on this one. Maybe, I don't know, is it too late? Maybe. To even just change a Pro Controller design to, to just adding that one jack, they still have to remake the controller in a, even if in a small way, put it back into production and pump it out there. They could start getting rid of the old models and start phasing in these new ones, but for the most part, everyone that has a Pro Controller at this point has a Pro Controller and how much is that jack worth to you? Is it worth another 80 bucks to go out and rebuy what you already have just for that jack? For me, probably, possibly, but for a lot of people, I imagine not. Maybe if they just phase in a new wave of them and that's probably what they should do. And if not, then some kind of Bluetooth, and that's what uh, Joshua says here, some kind of Bluetooth capability here, whether you're playing in handheld or docked, to be able to sit back in your chair with a headset on and just you know, like, why- that's such a 2019 thing as well that you messed up on, Nintendo. Like, why can't I sit on my couch with headphones playing a game? I can't do that on the Switch, not without a really long cord. I know there's ways, people have made devices for it. I mean, there's so many oversights Nintendo have made that other people have swooped in and capitalized on and made something jerry-rigged, some kind of device that you plug in the things here and there to make things work, but these are things that just should be built in. They just should be there. Again, I did my best to go through those tweets. If you have your own, leave them below. Let's really quickly go through some games. Here's the fun part. It's just we can relax and just get excited at game ideas. Oh, wait, before we relax, um, virtual console, anyone? <laughs> I'm not supposed to have my opinion. Oh, this one is gonna be, let me explain. Let me explain. 
I don't think Virtual Console is necessary or even inherently a good idea. Here is why. I'm going to keep this really short. If you're a fan of mine, you've been following the channel for a while, I've explained this a bunch of different ways, but I mean, just look at my channel and what I love the most on my Switch. What have I fallen in love with the most on the Switch? What series have I made 14 videos of now, totaling 140 games that I've reviewed on the Switch? Indie games. Why have indie games blown up on the Switch so much? I'll tell you why. In really short detail, because I've said it a million times on this channel, when the Switch launched, didn't have that many games. It had a lot considering. It had way more than the Wii U. Arguably, it had a lot more pretty early on than even the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One did. Nintendo did a great job at getting games on that system. And yeah, anyway, another story for another time. But what really held it together were the indie games. All those darling indie games we fell in love with really early on. Kamiko was only like five bucks. Snake Pass, another great one. I could keep listing them. All these games that actually got popular because of the Switch, because of this brand new system in its first six months, because they were there. Because people needed games to play and they'd already played the few big releases that were on the Switch by Nintendo and they were left with the eShop and the indie games. What would have happened if Nintendo relied on Virtual Console once once again. People wouldn't have bought these indie games. They would have re-bought Super Mario 3 for their 17th billionth time. You're telling me you'd see that the freaking $15 Snake Pass, whatever it was on the Switch, or a $15 Earthbound, and you're not buying Earthbound? Like, no offense to Snake Pass, but it's Earthbound. If you haven't already got my point, why is that such a great thing? Virtual Console, as Freaking amazing as that was on Wii U, it played a large part in why the Wii U failed. No one wanted to buy any other game that was made for the system. Because people had a choice between a very small handful selection of games that other developers and publishers were putting on the Wii U to try and, you know, make money, make sales, see if it was a market worth selling their games on. But people were over here buying those other games again for the billionth time instead of buying these new games. No matter what they were, they weren't getting bought. Good, bad, whatever. And sure, Nintendo were making money, easy money, right back in their pocket, but no one wanted to develop anything for the system because nothing was selling. Indie games weren't selling, big budget games weren't selling, ports weren't selling because people were buying freaking like Link to the Past again. And that wasn't the only thing that went wrong with the Wii U, but it didn't help. And Nintendo had to rely on their old games and they didn't want to do it this time around and they haven't. And what happened? People bought these other games and a whole indie scene blew up on the Switch because those games were there and there wasn't any competition at all. And now we have specific directs just for these indie games. Like a whole culture has been built around indie and Switch and it's why my videos about indie games on Switch do so well and it's why indies do so well because because there's no virtual console. I'm not supposed to have my opinion, <laughs> but I, I I don't mind personally that there's no virtual console. And I know that there, no matter how many ways I try and elaborate it and explain it, don't get me wrong, I would love it, but um, I love my indie games too. It's a very weird business mindset, I guess, but it's also something I'm passionate about, so I hope you won't hate me for that. But I'm not the voice of a nation. If you guys disagree with me, leave that down below. Nintendo will see it, and you know, it's up to them if they want to do it at that point. Again, if if I woke up one day and Virtual Console was there, it's going to be the one of the best days of my life. Vicky says Fable 1 to 3. I have to agree, actually. I love Fable. I would love to play the first one again. Obviously, a lot of people want Persona 5, but that wound is way too fresh, so I'm not even going to talk about it. A lot of people want all the Zelda games. I actually kind of agree with that at least. Or at least the Wii U ports put them in a package and throw them onto the Switch and sell them as one again. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, I agree with that too. I've been saying that for the longest time. I think that and Fatal Frame are the last two great Wii U games and if you've got to go ahead and port everything else over, you may as well throw those on there as well. Plus Fatal Frame never got a physical release here or outside of Japan, so go for it. I only play as I drift with just like Fortnite to run better. I, <laughs> I like that one. You know, surprisingly, there wasn't all that many games. It was mostly software and hardware. Ladies and gentlemen, and anyone in between, if you agree with anything that I said on this list today, even one small thing, please let me know what that was down below and share this video around because the more views this gets, the more revenue I make, but also <laughs> the more people see it and the more likely a lot of these changes actually do become. Again, if you have any wants or needs you want to add to this video, leave them down below. If there's anything I said today that you agree with, disagree with, I wonder what one of them could be, please have a discussion down below. Oh, and don't forget to click that link in the description and check out Manscaped, get your 20% off, your free bag and your free shipping. Okay, bye! If you're new around here, there's just a little thing that I like every new person to do when they come to this channel, and that's, um, hair flip.
all over that subscribe button. Hit that like button with a big old bang if you liked the video, and if you didn't like the video, hit the like anyway. <laughs> and to all of us that want and need things from the Switch, I wish you all good luck, because none of it's probably gonna happen.